The debate about the relationship between edge computing and the telco community has moved on as strategies and services are unveiled, relationships brokered and technology innovations accelerated. Now, to get an update on some of the key developments in the telco edge sector, I'm talking today with Caroline Chappell, Research Director, Cloud at Analysis Mason, and Jason Hoffman, President and CEO at Mobile Edge X. Caroline, Jason, great to see you both again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Caroline, let's start with you. Uh, Analysis Mason has just published a paper about the role of edge native clouds and what they will play in providing a unified compute fabric. What is driving this need and why do you think operators are in a position to lead? Well, thank you, Ray. Very nice to be here today. Uh, yes, we for the past three years, we've been looking at uh, Edge Cloud and how it's developing. And what we've noticed is that really we're in a very we're in an early phase of cloud at the moment where a lot of workloads have moved, obviously, or are moving to the big centralized public cloud. But there's a, a new wave of workloads, a new wave of applications or what we're calling edge native services that are waiting in the wings, uh, mostly around sort of operational technology. So it's not the IT systems. These are these are operational systems that that need to move to cloud. But in moving to cloud, there are good reasons why those workloads don't want to go to the big centralized clouds that we're seeing today. They need to stay local. They, they need to be in specific locations uh, for, for sovereignty, data sovereignty and privacy reasons, for, uh, for the cost of, uh, there's a lot of data that they'll produce. So, so you don't want to necessarily backhaul that, all that data to, to, to very large clouds. And, and indeed, you know, there have been, um, cases where, uh, companies actually have migrated their, their, their whole systems to the public cloud. Uh, and this is one for you, Ray. There's a U.S. coffee company, for example, coffee chain that, uh, put all their systems in the, in the cloud and then realized that, uh, if there was any connectivity issues, they couldn't serve their customers a cup of coffee. So for a lot of reasons, people are now say we need to have these workloads much closer to the to the edge. And we obviously we're seeing the first generation of edge clouds emerge in metro data centers, uh, in, in tier two and tier three cities. Um, indeed, you know, in, in many uh, city locations as a cold. But we think that there is going to be a need for um, many more distributed edge clouds everywhere. This is going to be, a, a, the need is for a fabric, if you like, of edge clouds. And, and when, a, um, when the uh, CIO of a Fortune 50 insurance company tells you that, you know, in order to do some of the natural language use cases that they, they want to be able to do in the future, the latency between a data center in Belfast and a data in, a center in Dublin is too great. You kind of sit up and, and, and take notice. So we wanted to explore, you know, what are the use cases that are driving uh, this, um, this move to a distributed uh, compute fabric that we believe is going to be sort of ubiquitous um, and being, need to be built out ubiquitously over the next decade. And, and that's really what the, the paper is exploring and looking at why operators have got a very good opportunity here to be the ones to be to be to play a very major role in building out that compute fabric. So in doing so, in, in building out for their own networks, operators are going to also build out uh, the, the whole edge cloud infrastructure that could potentially run a lot of the operational technology use cases I mentioned at the beginning. And we've seen from our research that 
what enterprises want from a cloud in order to run those uh, run those operational technology use cases are very close in terms of their location requirements, their performance, latency, and so on uh, requirements uh, uh, as as network functions. So we see a real synergy between the clouds that operators need to build out for themselves and those clouds that 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 could host. Um, this whole new uh, generation of use cases that, that we believe are going to come in the future. And that's why we think that there is a very big opportunity for operators here. Jason, are you getting a sense of what kind of timeline the telcos might be looking at for them to get involved or, or are you seeing others make a move? What we see now really from sort of a use case and characterization standpoint that we're seeing also different architectures and different types of apps showing up and so I think realistically, you know, over the next, um, uh, you know, if we, if we go ahead and model it entirely on the past, and then we'd say between 2021 and 2025, that by 2025, we'll feel really good that it's this app and this type of app and this type of app and this type of app. And that's what's going to be, you know, driving things forward. And then as we head towards the end of 5G deployments and the beginning of 6G deployments, I mean, you can sit down and sort of model out what 2021 and 2038 would very likely look like if it simply uh, did a bit like the last 20 years did. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's several things that basically you can argue would warrant, you know, that type of argumentation. But I mean, it seems certain that this is uh, going to happen. It, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and mm -hmm. as Caroline mentioned, you know, the use cases are very important here. Uh, and you mentioned that, Jason, as well. This will drive a lot of the decision making. And uh, while I love, of course, the example of the coffee company, um, uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, use cases do we expect to be uh, driving this kind of development, both in the, the near and the short term? Uh, Jason, w what's your view on the use case drivers? Well, and, that, and that's what we've uh, um seen. I mean, when you start talking about use cases, uh, people talk about them in a, in a variety of different ways. One is they may talk about uh, an industry vertical or, you know, a specific segment that it sits in. You know, this is a smart factory. This is about, uh, you know, a smart building. You know, this is in transportation. This is in retail. You know, they may sort of describe it that way. And then when you do that, you end up having 500, 600, 700, 800 sort of use cases that are out there. Um, you'll often hear them described by a technology. Oh, this uses AI, this uses computer vision, uh, you know, this uses, um, you know, the blockchain, you know, or the like. What we've come to realize, you know, at, uh, you know, Mobile Edge X, you know, really in particular over the last year, that all the use cases that are out there really come down into a common set of functional requirements and really just four categories. You know, and, and, and as, as Caroline uh, hinted to, you know, the common functional requirements is that, you know, when you have a device that talks to an edge that talks to a cloud versus a device that just has a backend on the cloud, when you look at the long-term defensible reason as to why that application, quote unquote, needs the edge, uh, it is because it technically has a location-specific and topology-specific need to that application. So when I think of the four categories, uh, they're divided um, into two and two. And the first sort of dependency is two of them are not device dependent and the other two are device dependent. Um, the first two that are not device dependent, one is the network itself. You know, So everything that operators are doing now and going forward in that, they actually have to think of their network as one of the key killer use cases for the edge. The second one, you know, around that is when you look at all the other styles of applications, there's this common architecture that emerges where they're on the device, they're in the edge, and they're in the cloud. It's a bi-directional stream of data, and you're doing different events and different computational acts along that, that stream. Well, that architecture is called flow applications. And so those flow architected applications where you're looking at a pipeline of data where things are moving in both directions, not just delivering content or not just you know sending in, but you have that bi-directionality of it. You wanna execute events along that stream and you wanna have the intelligent 
uh, use of things on device and things in the edge and things in the cloud. It's those flow applications that are the second big category. And so you look at almost all the use cases of now, they are this flow architecture. And as you can imagine, just like a pipeline, you're not going to build a pipeline across something like the Grand Canyon. You actually have to have, you know, supporting thing underneath. And that's where operators actually have to step up, you know, to support those. And all the technical components, this is in there. So this is where computer vision and AI and blockchain shows up in those flow architected applications. And then the two that are device dependent, uh, the first is metaverse. Uh, and the second is everything around autonomous devices. So whether it be control systems, traffic management, you know, and, and, and those likes. And I think once you begin to realize that the taxonomy of that is just the network, flow apps, um, metaverse, and autonomous devices, uh, those are what all the use cases fit into. And it's that type of taxonomy that then lets us sit down and say, ah, okay, then there needs to be a set of services that you know may some may be common across these four. Uh, some may service very specific aspects of them. Okay, so uh, a lot of moving parts and also a lot of potential there. Uh, but what's actually going to define success here, uh, Caroline? In analysis, Mason's view: what criteria need to be met for these edge native clouds to be competitive? Well. I think we think there are sort of five critical success factors, Ray. So the first is the software mindset, as um, to, uh, having a modern software mindset. So as Jason said, you know, the network is going to be the, a major use case uh, for, for the edge. And uh, the, the network is becoming software, software running on a cloud. So actually understanding uh, the, the tooling, the being able to build the software and taking, um, taking control of their own software destinies uh, for operators, I think is going to, to be a very big factor um, in, in, in their success here. The second is that the cloud stacks themselves need to be state of the art. Um, they, they, we, 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 they need to be cloud native. They need to uh, be based on, you know, the, the kind of tooling and the kind of stacks that the uh, public cloud providers themselves are building. So they, they can't be sort of on older technologies because all of these new applications are being built in a, in a cloud native way. And therefore, you know, you, you, there's no point in investing or just thinking you can repurpose old servers or old technology. You need to have the art here. The third is really edge native automation and orchestration. And, you know, we, we've heard a lot about orchestration, but this is going to take orchestration to a whole new level because the orchestration is not just going to be across a cloud or even, you know, several availability zones um, belonging to, 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 to one cloud. It's going to be across multiple clouds, multiple different clouds. Um, it's going to be highly distributed, potentially across thousands of locations. This kind of orchestration is, is um, it, it does exist today, but it, it only exists really from, from specialist providers. And it's, it's a completely new of orchestration. And then, of course, we need the, the, the developers. The operators need to be able to attract developers. And here, I think um, operators are facing an old conundrum which is how they, they can't make their network, their edge cloud platform special. It need, they need to be part of, the, of the, the sort of fifth critical success factor, which, mean, which is a federation um, of operators, um, all providing the same APIs and all providing a single platform or what looks like a single platform in order to attract a developer community. So some, some very big hurdles to overcome here, but if operators can get the, those right, I think they, they can be competitive. Okay, great. And, uh, and Jason, what do you think will define success in this uh, area? You know, what, when can we say, okay, these edge native clouds really are playing a, a, a big and important uh, role in service provider strategies? Well, I think one, um, service providers need to take what is the ultimate lesson from the hyperscale clouds, which is uh, they built a cloud for other people. 
and they use it too. So you can't imagine going to an Amazon and saying, well, you know, we're using all your stuff, but having Amazon go, well, you know, but what we do is too special, you know, for that over there. And there's still that mentality in many operators, this idea that, oh, we're going to build an edge that's maybe for these use cases, but, you know, our network is something special, uh, you know, in that. And you still have the same type of organizational fragmentation that then reflects up in a very fragmented strategy, you know, in that, you know, operators have to take the true lesson from the hyperscalers, which is build it and run your stuff on it. And if you do a truly excellent job of that, you do an excellent job of that as an industry, it'll in fact be inspirational towards third party developers and other people. Uh, nobody's going to trust, you know, a chef that never samples their own food, uh, you know, in that. And so edge has to be a unifying strategy for operators. Uh, and uh, they have to sort of then take that and reflect it, you know, all the way down in many of the sort of technology choices they make. And that's got to be reflected very well in their procurement regimes. Uh, you know, otherwise you're just going to stay on this little sort of like, you know, hamster wheel uh, that uh, some of them are on today. Yes, there may be needs to be a little bit more uh, push there rather than just a pull as uh, 5G sort of drags the operators into that edge and cloud age. Um, and Jason, as the GSMA Telecom Edge Cloud Initiative Chair, what cross-industry work do you see as important in bringing all of this to fruition? Oh, great. great. Thanks. Thank, thank you for that question. Uh, in the GSMA Tech Group, uh, I'd say we've been dealing with uh, three very large questions in, in order. Uh, you know, the first one was, can multiple operators uh, collaborate and work together to provide a, a common set of services and common sort of use cases that spanned, you know, networks? You know, a lot of the initial input that we got from developers is that they wanted a multi-operator, multi-country uh, solution to edge. And so, uh, many of the collaborations that you see out of the early days of uh, the GSMA Tech uh, Forum uh, is the type of um, use cases floating between, you know, operators like Telefonica and Deutsche Telekom and, and Telecom Italia, where, you know, you see those types of, um, you know, common capabilities across multiple operators. And so we went and successfully showed that uh, multiple networks can provide a common set of capabilities and multiple operators in a country and across countries can, you know, participate in, you know, the, these types of, you know, use case approaches. Um, the really sort of second phase goes back to that, that taxonomy we were talking about earlier. Uh, and that is now that we've, we've, we've looked at all these use cases and realized that they come into two that are not dependent on devices and two that are dependent on devices. And then when we sit down and look at the network itself, flow applications, metaverse, and, you know, it, uh, and sort of autonomous, uh, you know, control systems, you know, for those four types of categories, uh, then we go, ah, that's a very good, you know, functional characteristic, you know, functional characterization of what those are. And it lets us move to, um, really being able to have the internal strategic conversations that we're supposed to build an edge and put our network on it and, and be a valid, uh, you know, sort of provider of this pipeline in between around these types of flow applications. And we have to help the device folks, you know, innovate when it comes to those devices. And then really sort of move to the final, you know, question in my mind, which is the operator community does do a good job of launching new services and the sort of fundamental question then of what net new services do we need to launch to support these application types um, is a much more straightforward thing to do as we as we've marched through that. And that's what we're trying to accomplish, uh, you know, in that industry forum. OK, great. Well, uh, good to see so many operators involved in that and look forward to the progress in the coming years. Uh, well, it's been great to get this update on developments of the edge for the network operators. Let's see what 2022 brings us. Caroline, Jason, been a pleasure to talk with you again today. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.